you appear not to have so much faith as to the activities of this government in the last one year. If I just oppose your comments with that of uh, Doin Okugwe, doctor, who on a national TV almost likened the president as Jesus and said that uh, he had the courage to remove the, subs uh, the full subsidy. So are you not thinking that doing is right, that uh, the man has the courage of a lion to remove the full subsidy that no other leader in Nigeria has been able to do? Then did we have a fair subsidy in actuality? You know, when I hear some of our elder brothers and sisters and those who otherwise should pass for statesmen talk, I wonder where they're coming from. I wonder whether they understand the reality and the urgency of now. I'm a lawyer. By training, when you're above, about 70 and above, there's something we'll call your declarations. Your statements should be like, the dying man's declaration, where um, your opinions should be forthright, should be truthful, and should be committed to the best good. Unfortunately, for Doyokupe and his likes, they try to be correct by half. They try to be politically correct. Njinja, my response to Doyi and his likes is simple. I want Doyi to tell me. How many liters of fuel is consumed in Nigeria per day? I want Doreen to tell me how much crude oil is taken out of Nigeria per day. I want Doreen to tell me where exactly these monies are paid to. You know, when you talk about subsidy, the greatest time in our historicity has come in three names. They call it subsidy, they call it under recovery, and they call it under declaration of sales, and all of them defines one huge scam. We live in a country that does not know the total number of or liters of fuel consumed in a day. If you don't know how much fuel you consume, how do you pay subsidy? It's a scam. Exactly. So, isn't because of that scam? I mean, if I want to play the devil's advocate and take the line of thought of, of uh, doing, and I will say, well, that's because we do not know these uh, three items itemized here, and that is the reason to just do away with the uh, scam code subsidy. After Let me all, blow your mind. Yes. That, uh, I threw up that poser because I wanted you to come that way. Now, simply, if you don't have subsidy, then what did you remove? I think it's part of the same scam. Now they told us that in remove, removing subsidy, they have saved trillions of naira. The same government that tells us that they have saved monies are the same government that are telling us that they can't find monies to get the refineries working. And you ask yourself, the witch cried last night. The child dies this morning. You make your conjectures. You ask yourself, who's Telling the truth. Now, I think that what government must do is interrogate the realities. Njenje, we have on record companies within the past 12 years that were receiving monies in the name of subsidy daily. Some in the records had monies paid to them and their accounts three times in a day. Where are these companies? If you must fix your country, you need monuments of reference and monuments of deterrence. I think that what I expect first of Mr. President, if it truly meant well from the start, is to interrogate the oil sector, is to interrogate the subsidy regime, is to interrogate what NMPC Limited does with our crude oil, is to interrogate those who are responsible for the lifting of crude oil, is to interrogate those who are responsible for butter of our crude oil for finished products. You don't live in a country where every so often we're told that we import products and the products are subsidized. You ask yourself, for a barrel of crude oil, you have about eight distillates. 
eight byproducts. Nigeria principally depends on PMS, petrol, DPK, kerosene, aviation fuel, low power of oil, LPFO, and HPFO. And then you ask yourself, what about the other distillates? Who's deceiving who? I think that the time has come for us as a people to interrogate leadership and call a spade by its name. I have not given up on government. I have not given up on Nigeria. I can't. That's why my movement is called Country First Movement. And I believe that the time has come for us to call a spade by its name. In one year, how well has this administration fared? When the administration told you that they are unable to have, unable to have a farm fair, it means that they understand that they haven't delivered on their promises. I'm not the one who has said so. They have said so in so many ways. When this administration tells you that it will have a low kid celebration, it means that they admit that Nigerians are deeper in poverty than when they emerged. It means that they admit that security of lives and properties are far worse than it was before they came. It means that they have admitted without a provocation that so much needs to be done. And I'll tell you generally, Njenje, that we have a democracy that's about 25 years old. But at best, and truly, what we have is civil rule. Because democracy, according to Abraham Lincoln, and as understood by the schoolboy, should and off be government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Tragically, what we have is at best an oligarchy of sorts, at best a fiefdom of sorts, at best the government of a few, for a few, and by a few. But I pray, like Winston Churchill, the former British Prime Minister, may God bless his soul, said, that his struggle is to ensure that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people does not depart from the earth. Our struggle, my struggle, is to ensure that someday, sooner rather than later, we shall have a government that is responsible and responsive to the people. And so I pray that Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as well as those who sing his mandate, realizes that Nigeria wants, Nigerians want a country that works for all. It's beyond partisan obscurantism. It's beyond whether I like his looks or not. It's beyond whether I like his urbanness or not. It's about a common humanity. It's about how government impacts the lives of the masses of our people. And so our challenge to government is to rise beyond ethnic cocoonery. It's to rise beyond religious tendencies. It's to rise above clannishness and make the primacy of lives and properties and make the well-being of the people the sum of bonum and the reason for which governments exist. You know, in one of your, in your response now, you, you know, talked about uh, praise singing and psychophancing. But if I remember with the word singing, we changed the national anthem from 19, you know, back to 1960. Isn't that a leapfrog? Isn't that an achievement to have been, you know, to have done in one year? The ability to change the national anthem and bring it back to 1960, that's a wonderful achievement. Prof, you must agree with me on that. Ginger, I think you're being a bit cynical. Uh, and the reasons are profound. Um, every society wants to move forward. An independent nation like others would want to move forward. And Ginger, this is about one of the very few countries that, upon independence, did not transmute and transform completely. Most of the countries of the world, on independence, even changed their names and identity. I remember that at some point, the Benin Republic was called Dahomey. And they turned back and said, no, we belong to the tendencies of our fathers and our ancestors. And they changed it from, Benin, from Dahomey 
to Benin Republic. I remember also very lucidly that at some point, what is called Burkina Faso today was called Upper Volta. And they turned around and said, no, we are the state of upright man. That's what Burkina Faso means. Remember also that at some point Ghana was called Gold Coast. And they turned around and said, no, we must identify the ways of our fathers and ancestors. And they chose Ghana. I, I hear that a few Nigerians are beginning to say that, oh no, we should drop what Bernard Shaw, the mistress who later became the wife of Lord Lugard, gave us, Nigeria, the Niger area. And then some are saying, okay, we should be called Songae. There are several other things. We can think out with those realities. But unfortunately, after well over 60 years of independence, we're returning back to an anthem written by a white woman. At the worst, if you think that a rise of compatriot does not encapsulate in the best of ways our collective identity, why did you not commission a committee of smart eggheads, Nigerian ideologues, to say, we want a new anthem. Give us an anthem that understands and appreciates our reality. Why take us back to an anthem written by a white woman? Why also take us back to values that we're fighting to so defeat? Without the provocation, we understand that our fault lines are ethnicity, religion, and region. If you want to identify those realities without trouble, why not rework the Arise O Compatriot Anthem? Why take us back to a lady who does not understand the realities of our existence? <laughs>